Hello everyone, Mike Grempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at how to sum up values that are part of an alphanumeric text string. But before we jump into that, please take a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you will get a notice whenever I put out a new video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also find me at any of the social media sites you see here. Now, let's check out today's topic. So here's our scenario. I have an order date from September 1st to the 21st. I have 10 items, and here's the number of gross that were entered. Now, gross is 144 items. So in the case of item one, you have one, three, five gross. So I wanna know that there are 720 items, which is five times the 144 items per box, or how many gross that are in there. Item nine only has one, so I should expect an answer of 144. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter my formula, copy it down, and then we'll walk through to see how that works. I'm gonna type equals sum, and then I'm gonna use the filter function, and then the left function. And with the left function, I'm gonna highlight my range, and I'm going to lock that, and I'm going to add a zero to that, and you'll see why in a minute. Comma, now what is the inclusions of my filter function. Well, I want to know in this case of these items here, I'm going to lock that, equals that item there, close my parentheses, and I'm going to multiply that times my gross amount of 144. Again, lock that, close my parentheses, hit enter, and I get 720 for the first item. And when I copy that down, I get the matches as I anticipated them to be. So let's walk through this formula and see how it works. And I'm going to start in the center and work my way out. So first, I'm going to enter the left formula. And if I enter the left formula, highlight this range, close my parentheses, hit enter, I will get the first character of all those items. Now with the left function, there's two arguments. One is the range or the text, and then the second is the number of characters. But notice that that's an optional argument, so if by default, you would just have the first character. It defaults to a one. So that is why I just get the first character. Now notice these are all justified to the left, so they are still text. The reason that I need to put the ampersand in a zero is because ultimately we want to sum these, and we're gonna multiply them times a value here. And if it's just a blank text, or any text, I'm going to get an error, a value error. So I need to put something in there that will convert to a value, and that is going to be a zero. So that's why I put the ampersand and then a zero there, and now it populates all those blank spaces with a zero. Now again, these are still text. So the next thing I'm gonna do is add the filter function. And with the filter function, what I want to know is which of these items here, and again, I'm going to lock that, is equal to whatever item I have in column M. Close that parenthesis, hit enter, and now I just have it for the first column. Now I'll add the sum function. Now if I just tried to sum these, I'm going to get a zero because I'm trying to sum text. And again, how do you convert a value that's text into a usable number? Well, there's a few different ways. One way is to multiply it times another number. Multiply it times a one, you can divide by a one, you can put a double negative sign in front. But in this case, since we want to see how many gross we have, we're gonna multiply it times are 144, and again, I'm gonna lock that, and when I hit enter, now I get 
the 720. As I copy that down as I did here, that will give me all the values that I want to match for each of the items. And that's how you do that in this scenario. Now, this scenario will only work when you have less than 10 items because, again, with the left function, we're defaulting to a number one for number of characters. And if you have 12 or 15, 20, 30, etc., you want that to be a two. So we're going to need to modify this in order to accommodate larger than nine gross of items. So if we go to our second sheet here, I have three different items that are greater than 10, 12 gross, 19 gross, and 11 gross. And what I've had to do is modify the formula to include an ifs function. So what I've basically said is in the ifs function, if the length is seven, meaning gross, a space, and a single digit, then just give me the left and I can ignore the number of characters because it'll just give me one. If that length is eight, that means there's two values there. Give me the left of that range, but the number of characters would be two. Else, just populate a zero. And again, I have to have that zero in order for ultimately to get the sum function to work properly. If you have three digits, then you can add another if the length is nine, then use the left function comma three. If the length is 10, then a comma four, etc. As many as you need in that ifs statement in order to accommodate however many numbers or however many values you have in front of your text. And that's how you can do this in Excel.